That's right, folks. Well, it's not my head that's busted wide open. It's, uh, well, I'll show you. Stay tuned. All right, well, welcome back, friends. Thank you. It's been a while. Oh, it's been a while on YouTube, anyways. If you hadn't noticed, <laughs> the little channel, there's a link down here below. Click it. Go to the new channel. Sign up there. Yeah, there's going to be more going on over there, I think, than they're going to be on the big channel. Okay, I'm going to get you and bring you over here and show you this. I've got this banjo over here. The head is busted wide open on it, man. And that head ain't been on there very long. But uh, I'll get you and bring you over here and show you and tell you all about it. And I want to make a point about guitar tops, too. This is a perfect opportunity for me to do that. So I'm going to come get you, come get you, come get you, and uh, bring you over here. And show you what I'm talking about. We're going to change the head on this. If you've never seen the inside guts of a banjo and the crap you got to go through with them, they're the most uh, touchy instrument in the acoustic business, I think. Because you got the, the, all these brackets and the head and, and the tailpiece and everything's adjustable on them. All right, come on over. Let's get into it. All right, check this out. Busted head. Do you see that? I think it's busted right there. The point I wanted to make about guitar tops though, if you can look right here and see this waviness right here in that, can you see that it's it's wavy, I can feel it, and I can see it a little bit there. On guitar tops, when your guitar bellies up, okay, this area back here raises up, like this head busted here, it has to compensate somewhere else. Because all the, the tension and everything has just changed. <laughs> so, you know, for your guitar to belly up, it has to compensate. The top does. And uh, usually it'll be in somewhere else. If it, it comes up back here, a lot of times you get, it'll go sink in here. And that's what gives us uh, fall away with the fretboard extension. Banjo don't have fretboard extension, obviously, as you can see. But that's the point I wanted to make. Whenever your guitar, you know, dries out or gets too much uh, humidity, and it starts to belly up, you can bet that belly is not the only thing that's moving. It's got to move somewhere else, like in this case it was here. It's got to move somewhere else to compensate for that movement. All right, I'm going to take four of these out and get the resonator off. And we're going to dig deep into this jewel. I'm going to put that head right there on it. I know it's pretty bad, but it's not busted. This one is. And I don't have any new heads. I've got like 10 here that look just like that. Uh, and some of those are star heads. I want the uh, Weather King Remo head. That's what this one is. So that's what we're going to stick with. All right, let's get into it. All right, I've already loosened the strings. First thing we we'll do is get this out of the way. That's how you say the intonation, just move the bridge. <laughs> move the entire bridge. I've already taken these screws out that I showed you. So we've got to get rid of this. This is the resonator of the banjo. <laughs> the banjo, working on banjers. This is a quarter inch uh, stocket here. Normally I would go around here and take a little off, you know, off of here and here, here and here here and here and work my way back that's the way we'll tighten the head up that we put on here but this one's busted wide open man so i gotta loosen all these and i'm just going to do that and i used to take a small drill and do this but once you get them loose enough to turn with your fingers they're pretty fast after that so how you all doing baby you gotta be careful with this tailpiece back here. I hope everyone's doing well. Had happy holidays. It'll probably be February before you see this video. Oh, there's a tight one. Wow, it should have been about the same tightness as well, not with the head busted. Everything changes, man. This banjo's mine. That's why I don't care to put the old head on it. I mean, I'm never going to be getting rid of this banjo. So, you know, and I really don't care what it looks like. I do like to keep it playable, though. I mean, 
might want to get back into that someday. <laughs> In fact, you all may have a hell of a surprise coming pretty soon. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Alright, we're completely loose all the way around, I think. Tighten back up. They, they tend to do that. I mean, think about it, man. What are they, 24 or 26 brackets on these things? Ah, uh, they vary. Some of them's different. Wow, that one right there is, man. Why that one's so tight? I didn't put this head on this banjo. A friend of mine did. And like I say, I don't think it was new when he put it on there, but it wasn't busted. Alright, now, I think I can just do this. And you can see that's going to be pretty fast. As you can see, yep, there's a stubborn one. Always one like that, yes. So I won't hold you here for this. When I get all these completely off, loose, I'll bring you back and uh, show you what comes next. All right, we're all loose here. I forgot to mention, you got to take this armrest off, which I already did. It's also quarter inch screws. Just a couple of little screws that hold the armrest on it. Two of them. And you got to take his tailpiece off. I left it on there so I can get all these brackets out of the way. Just about got them all, I think. Come on, man. There we go. There's another one there. He's got to be loose from the hoop. I think that's all of them. They are, yeah. All but that one. This is a okay. Now we got to take these tailpiece off. It's going to be kind of a pain to do with strings on it. <laughs> uh, and we'll see how that goes. I'm going to have to get a wrench and do that because I don't have the socket. This bar sticks out over here on this side of the rim. This is a pot or rim. Uh, this is the flange. These are brackets. There's 24 on this banjo. That's usually normal on pretty expensive banjos. Anyways, uh, this rod comes through here. That's a coordinator rod. There's two of them. This one comes all the way through and got a nut back here. And uh, it's so close to the tail bracket, I can't get a wrench this on it. So I'm going to get a, a uh, open end type wrench. So hold on for that. All right, we're free, I think. I was going to say, this banjo, most of them have 24 brackets. Uh, most expensive banjos do. And then two uh, two screws holds the arm piece on. That's uh, 26. And one that holds the tail piece on. 27, 27 screws. i got to hold that tail piece down. There's nothing holding it in right now. It's just sitting there. Say that and can't get it off. I hope this turns out okay. And then we just work him off. Some brackets here that don't want to give it up. This banjo takes a high crown head. Yeah, check it out, man. Damage busted halfway around the bottom of it. That's what a busted head looks like. It's kind of like a drum head, only not beat. You know, like drum heads are. They get pretty ugly, though. Uh, while I got this apart and all the brackets loose, I'm going to grab a rag. I'm not going to hold you guys for this. I'm going to grab a rag and wipe this around down in here, if you can see that, where those brackets are. Cause it's hard to get in there and polish or anything. Here's the what the tone ring looks like. Oh, it's got a it might have a screw in it up here. I think it does. So we might take it out. Anyways, that's what it looks like. It just lifts up out of there. I want to wipe that off too. So I'm not gonna hold you up for that. I'll bring you back when we get ready to put the new head on it. 
All right, just got through wiping it all down real good. Uh, well, I didn't wipe this off. Let me run over it real quickly. Some banjos are chrome plated, some of them's nickel. Uh, some of them's got a wood tongue ring in them. Some's metal, some's. Oh, they make them out of all kind of crap. I don't know what this one's made of. I can't remember. All right. Like I say, this is a 11-inch head is what it takes. Most bezos are that. You want to make sure this area around here is really smooth because there's going to be a lot of tension on that. Make sure it's really smooth. I even go as far as to take a rag and uh, spray a little WD-40 on it and you know touch this area right here with it. All right, let's see if she fits, and she does fit. I always put the uh, the name of the head back here so the tailpiece covers it up. A lot of banjo players put them up here where you can see them. I don't know why. It doesn't do anything really. Just uh, it's certainly not going to help this one for looks. <laughs> the head I'm talking about. I might order a new head someday for this. Who knows? Put the tension hoop back on it. Square it up with the neck here, the fretboard. That looks pretty good. And we just want to put a few brackets in it to keep the hoop from going anywhere. I'm going to have to loosen them more to get them to reach that. There again, I won't hold you for this whole entire thing. I just want to show you. There's one there. I'm going to get one about right here, if I can. Just to hold the thing together. And then we got to, the next step will be putting the tailpiece on it. Back on it. So now you know what the guts of a banjo looks like. I know most of you guys are probably are guitar players. But I wanted to change this. I thought, you know, maybe somebody wants to see it. A lot of guys use a small uh, torque wrench to tighten all these up evenly. Now if I can get one right here. Hold everything in place and get the the uh, tailpiece back on it. And I'll bring you back when we get ready to do all that jazz. Okay, I'm not going to hold you here for this because it's it takes one little screw and a nut. Here it is. What the thing looks like. Oh, where's the camera, man? Little screw and a little nut. Okay. And uh, it's really hard, man, to get this down through the hole. Well, I'll get it at least in position first. Maybe I will. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm not going to hold you here for this because I've got to turn the banjo over. Go ahead and do that. And I've got to get my head in there. <laughs> and, uh, Put that tiny screw on. It goes right there. So I'll bring you back when that's done. We'll talk about some more. Hold on. All right. Now we're getting making some headway. Now comes another fun part. It's going to take a long time. I'll show you what I'm doing. Now I got to go around here and loosen these enough to get this hook over the end of the hoop and tighten them back up. Just finger tight. That's all we want right now. Is finger tight. I'll get around here in a minute. Maybe you can see. Uh, it's almost off the screen. Some screens is not going to show this. I probably ought to zoom you out a little bit. Sorry for the shaky, shaky cam. Now maybe you can see what's going on. On uh, some cell phones, I know the screens, if you swell them up full screen, it actually cuts some of the video out. You can't see it around the edges. 
can see it's got they got a hook on the end of them if you can see the hook right there and that's got to go all the way down and hook into the hoop there's 24 of these I'm going to do this to so you can imagine it's going to take a little bit it's not bad I've changed an awful lot of these over the years when I used to play anyways I won't hold you here for this just showing you what I'm going to do all the way around man and do them all and now I'll bring you back and show you what we got to do after that at that point we got them all in there finger tight that's all no tighter than just finger tight and you want to look in at the back of the head here now and where I tighten that tail piece up I can see waves in the head and I need to tighten up the sides to pull those waves out of that so the sides are going to have to be a little bit tighter the tail piece is what's doing that I could loosen the tail piece I guess I can get this on there it won't go on there because of that thing that's what I'm going to do there I'm going to loosen it and uh, you want that to stay flat in there keep it flat then you start putting a torque to it and tune it I like mine uh, tuned to G, G or G sharp usually it's where I set my heads at I can squeeze that and it goes flat and see it going flat that's exactly what it is that tail piece it's, got, it's too tight so let me find some way to get a wrench on that. Oh, I think I did. Uh, there's just no way to do it with that the way it's made. All right, be that way. Anyways, get it flat, and then take this, and uh, you know, start working your way around. Like do this one, this one, this one, this one, third one, a third one, the fourth one, the fourth, fifth. And, you know, work your way back evenly. I don't count the threads, or I don't use a, uh, a, uh, what was the wrench I said just a minute ago? It, it clicks when you get so tight. Torque wrench. I don't use one of those. I just do it by hand, count the threads, and watch that head. Make sure it stays good and flat. You want it to come down evenly. You can warp your tone ring, your, uh, hoop, if you pull it down too much, you know, in the wrong place. Too much is at one time that's what I'm trying to say all right I'm not going to hold you here for this I'm just going to keep doing this until it gets flat inside I can see it changing the sides need to be pulled tighter it's pulled tight back here I'm going to get a wrench and loosen that tailpiece first and then uh, do all that but I won't keep you here for it because it takes for friggin ever man then we got to tune that head all right I loosened the tailpiece and, the, and that made it go flat tightened all these up finger tight and it's flat as a pancake in there now perfect man and uh now's where the fun starts so all you do is just uh whichever side you want to start i'll start on one closest to me you just want to turn that about a quarter of a turn or half a turn each one of them and just remember where you are this is the third one back. The third one back. There's a, there's a bracket here and here that holds the resonator on. And I count start counting one again from there. So that is really it's four. But we're going to count it as one. I hear heat coming. We're supposed to get a really big snow. They're calling for a foot here where I live. Uh, if we get that, I think I tight that. Yeah, I did. If we get it, I'll try to get you guys some shots of it. It's three. Here's four. A foot, man. Four. Four, five. Four, five. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm not going to hold you guys here for this. And I'm not going to talk while I'm doing it because I'll forget where I am if I do. That was six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we have 
three left. One, two, three, four, five, six, three left. Okay. So we'll work three and three. Two and two and one and one. And then we just do it again. Do it all again. Start right back up here. I'm not going to keep you here for that. Because uh, it takes for freaking ever, man. I mean, it's just a uh, very slow. So you see, i got to do just what I told you again. Do the same thing. Go all around one side or the other all the way back just like you saw me do. And then do it again after that. And tap the head. And, uh, you know, tune the head. I like to say, I, like to say I, like to, I used to like when I played. G or G sharp was what I preferred. Some people like uh, A or even I've seen them tune the size B before. But that's getting pretty tight. And a banjo changes the sound enormously. <laughs> you know, however tight the head is. Anyways, I got to do that however many times till I get it to it. I tap it and it's a G note. And then I got to put the armrest back on. I got to put uh, the bridge back on. Set the intonation by moving the bridge. I'm not going to hold you here through all that. But I appreciate you watching. Thank you. I hope you learned something about banjos today. Uh, they're a beast, man. Not only to play, but to work on, too. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Got a surprise coming down the hatch. <laughs> I think it's going to blow some people, a lot of people's minds. And it's coming. So, hope to see you there. Cheers. I'll see you next time! The Boogity Bob. <laughs>